Well, in today's video, we have some mail to open. This package was generously sent in by Nick Sivo. Oh! Hi, Mike. I figured this would at least be fun to tear down if not use in a project. Feel free to give it away if so inclined. It's incredibly fun watching two CoCam come together. Cheers, Nick. Wow, this is delightful. Well, yeah, tearing this down seems like a great idea. So this Euclid thing is basically Intel's new robotics development platform. It's a little x86 processor, an Atom, so basically a netbook, and a battery, and some other sensors, and most notably a real sense depth camera. So sort of like the RGB plus depth camera you might be familiar with in the Kinect. So small camera aperture, bigger camera aperture, with this pattern here that makes it look like this is an extremely wide angle lens. We have a super speed host, it looks like, mini HDMI. It has a button, two buttons, I think. I think these are buttons. Five volt, three amps. I guess this is the battery. So it's a one cell LiPo, 2200 milliamp hour. So we got a whole bunch of doodads, including some cableage. Four gig memory, and I assume this is like an EMMC with 32 gigs. So GPS proximity sensor. Um, yeah, and, and an IMU. Oh, and the, that was the RGB camera. So we didn't even see the depth cameras. Those were behind the uh, behind the filter. So the holes in the filter material were for these two RGB cameras. Test port, Intel use only. Well, well, well. Connect to a magic SSID. Power adapter plate. I guess that's just for if you're not using the battery. Not the brightest LEDs, but it is there. Cool. So I assume it's booting now. Oh, chime and the fans came on. Cool. So these were basically demos that come with their ROS installation, I think. Let's try this camera thingy. There's another chime. Hi. So there's the color camera. This is not the fisheye. This is, wow, I can see like a laser pointed at my face when I look at the camera. I wonder if that's safe. Um, here's a depth image. Oh, the fans are starting up in here. <laughs> this is the tiniest little computer. So fisheye is very, very wider. Person, downsampled. <laughs> Even more fans. IMU, noise. That seems quite useful. So normally with ROS, this is how you drive around your robot, but I assume I would have to add on some kind of output devices for this to be useful. Anyway, I'm curious to look more at this depth image. Can we make this bigger? I can change the compression quality, but what about the size? Anyway, let's just make this image bigger and see if we can walk around the shop with it a little bit. That is the chair. That's the trash can. That's the rack. Kitty. Maybe the wall is too bright for it. There's a lot of sunlight on that wall. Maybe I'll have to try this again at night. Does this work better in the dark? Like if I use this like under the desk? Maybe it's having trouble with the ambient light in here. This dark area under the desk, it seems like I'm actually getting depths there, but I just wasn't reading anything for that back wall. And I think it might've, might've been light. I couldn't think of any other, yeah, that blackness there. Even when I was right next to it, it was still black. There's the color camera. That fisheye camera is really wide, and the VFD is really flickery on it. Wow. Oh yeah, it's Ubuntuing. It's the Ubuntu brown bootloader. And the fan is back. Okay. Wow, it's just a little Ubuntu desktop thing. Let's um plug a keyboard in.
got four cores, little atom things. It's bound to be pretty warm right now. What else is interesting here? This is probably a pretty stock little Ubuntu system with ROS installed. Oh, there's like data for the camera. Did they calibrate all of these uh, at the factory and then store these images on the file system? I wonder if this is something they do for each camera or just for each model of camera. Oh, isn't there, there's a, there's like a Ross, yeah, Arviz. Can we use that? Oh, this isn't actually connected to the real robot, is it? So if I run, if I run this, cameras, I don't know what's actually going on. Ross launch, there's, there's like a whole, whole Ross thing going on. Anyway, I think if I run something like Arviz, it'll connect to that instance of ROS core, which has the database in memory. Let's see if that's true. Oh, there is a point cloud topic. Let's see, let's try that. Fixed frame map does not exist. Yeah, so I think it just needs to know what frame of reference this is in. Yeah, camera depth frame. So this is what the coordinate system of this visualizer should be. And it was just using a default coordinate system, I think, but now we're using an actual coordinate system that exists the way this is set up. I don't know how calibrated this is. Let's maybe try walking around to this a little bit. I mean, this is connected to the monitor, so I can't walk around a lot, but. So that's pointed, oh, that's pointed down, okay. Where's the front of this device? Image a cup of tea. Whoa. I just completely lost the camera. Oh, sixth off is the one that includes slam. Okay. And then this one adds person tracking. I'm a person, I think. Okay. Is trajectory what I want? Oh, there's a very subtle grid on there. So it knows roughly where it is. That's the location part. I don't see any obvious way to enable mapping though. Let's try the person detector. Am I person-like enough for it? Oh, there we go. It knows about people. How, how good of a cat detector are we doing here? Oh, two goes to sleep. He's so cute. Okay, does this come apart easily? We have the battery. What's under the for Intel's use only cover? So that could be any number of things. My guess is that that's probably some kind of in-circuit debug for the processor. Um, what other things can we take off? I think these are speaker holes. This whole back panel is metal. It also appears to be the same piece as the sides, so maybe we have to go in through the front. That's depressing. Does this top come off? I don't know if that's how this comes off. Let's see if I can very gently get this plastic off. Yeah, I think this is right. I think there's adhesive, there just luckily isn't very much of it. Okay, so the one with this nice little textured light baffle is the extreme fisheye camera. Then, that was the 1080p. Then these two must be infrared cameras. Um, so the cable is a Wi-Fi antenna. Okay. And there's the insides. I don't know what metal this is. I'm assuming it's probably aluminum, but it could be something exotic like magnesium. And it looks like there's also a separate piece for the tripod mount. This is a nice design so far. And just copper edges on that board, like it's just putting out all the heat. So the fisheye camera is a completely separate unit over here, but the color and depth cameras are integrated onto this one assembly. Wow. Fingernails to the rescue. Those look like individual foil shields for each of the wires. 
That's great. And then there, the foil shields are all soldered to the connector shell. And then the actual depth camera is in this module. Let's take a look at all the circuit boards after we figured out how to get this thing apart. Now, I think we're down to being able to lift this whole assembly out. I think that might be another screw. Oh, I think it's sticking on the USB connector over here. Yeah, that was it. Wow, is that metal foam? So that's the, uh, they're just using this whole thing as the heat sink. They don't have much else. I mean, they've got the fan, but. So this is the back shell. This is really thin. This feels like machined aluminum. These covers that we were seeing earlier are plastic. Those are the area behind the battery latch cutouts. This interface has another set of pogo pins for actually contacting onto the circuit board, which is also pretty posh. Flapping around in the breeze, as, uh, as you might say. It's like they're kind of taped in or something. That's where the Wi-Fi antenna plugs in. There we go. Okay, so the Wi-Fi is, I'm assuming, a little patch under this, or on the opposite side of this piece of tape. This is probably a little foil patch that has the antenna printed on it. And then that would be the coax joint gooped over in silicone. Oh, and we lost a little piece of rubber to keep track of that. That looks like a color sensor. Yeah, we need the microscope already. I'm assuming we're seeing a little photodiode array with some different masks on top. Now that is a strange little device. Oh, here's another piece of rubber that's kind of loose. Oh, these are microphone covers. Oh, there's some flux residue left over from what looks like hand soldering on the super speed USB connector. These are definitely not cost optimized. These, this is the area where the pogo pins press for the battery, so I imagine they wanted to be really careful with the soldering in that vicinity. That's a really difficult design decision to end up putting those solder joints right next to an exposed pogo pin land because any of that flux could be a problem. It looks like they might have masked that area off as they were soldering because the flux doesn't, like there's a hard line there. So they probably had to tape over that, then solder by hand, then untape it during manufacture. There are many cables in between these two boards. Oh, there's another microphone cover. <laughs> Thanks. So we have a fan power connector over here. This is the connector we already took one end off of for the depth camera, and then this is... That's for the wide angle camera. And then we have this flex sneaking all the way around here for the sensors. Oh, interesting. So there's a microphone on that flex. So that snakes over here and then over there. So it looks like we should be able to unhinge these if I just free this connector. Well, that just came out, which is fine. That looks like the speaker with more little spring terminals to attach it to the main circuit board. I assume the processor is under here. Wow, so that chip on the left is probably just the power supply. And then we have the atom and then, what is the one on the right? You know, it would make sense if that was the RAM and then this chip that was outside the shield was the flash. This, this is some kind of IO chip. This is gonna be the storage, I think. This is gonna be the BIOS. That's gonna be the processor power supply. And that's the actual processor, and that's RAM. Yeah, so this is the sensor assembly. I was trying to get a look at the back. That looks like it's double-sided tape. Copper channel. That's their main thing. What are they hiding under that sticker? Realtek. That's not what I was expecting. RTS 5845, what is that? Yeah, 5825. Yeah, okay. So maybe this is going to be nearby, but not public. Interesting. Okay, well, it's probably safe to assume this is something that's related to the other Realtek camera controllers, but was made custom for Intel or isn't generally available yet. I assume this is just firmware revision. Maybe this is an emitter, not a sensor. Maybe LED is LED or light, light emitting diode or laser diode. Could it be laser diode? 
That would explain this big ol' inductor connected right to it. So maybe this is a laser diode and a laser diode power supply. We might be able to look up U32. I'm guessing it's some kind of switching controller. And then this AAFA package. That looks like something else power supply related. You can see it connecting directly to this bank of capacitors. That looks like a feedback resistor network, maybe? My assumption is that most of this is probably power related or related to driving the laser. It's possible one of these is maybe an EEPROM. Seems more likely this is maybe like a supervisor chip, linear voltage regulator. It also looks like they're using blind vias on this board. So if you see this, this little kind of speech bubble shaped patch of copper, that's gonna have a via under it but it looks like they've mostly filled in the vias on this board. Yeah, you can see the outlines of the vias over here that have been filled in, but they still leave a dimple. Filter on the USB twisted pair. I guess I assume this is USB. USB would be the sensible way for them to connect this. So then one more chip. We haven't seen this one yet, right? And then here's another little one that might be memory. No hits on Google for that. That is almost certainly some kind of real sense custom silicon. Silicon. It's a weird set of markings. Is that first I maybe for Intel? Okay. And then we also have another circuit board over here for the wide angle camera. So separate ribbon down here. Also looks like it's expensive shielded connector. Another little power supply component maybe down there. Let's see what's under the sticker. Various things. Passives, chips, hopes and dreams. Anything familiar? I mean, maybe this one isn't USB. This could be some other interface, but I would have expected this to be a USB webcam. I don't even recognize a manufacturer on that one. It says 05186D. I don't see any obvious like data pairs coming off of that. So what about the backside of this circuit board? Anything interesting here we can get out of the way before we dig into the real the real center of this design. So we've got super speed USB host. That's pretty rad in a machine this small. That's the Wi-Fi module. Oh, Ampac technology. This is not a vendor I've heard of. AP6234 is a low cost and low power consumption module with integrated dual band 802.11 ABG and single stream N. Oh yeah, what is that thing at the top? That's interesting, isn't it? Uh huh. It's like they had the option of installing a shield there, but they didn't, just over that tiny little section. Is that maybe a power amp? Why is that? Is there an external? What's under there? Maybe they've got an external power amp. Let's see if we can pop that off. Hey there, Celastic. Ooh, more really nice filled vias there. You can see the dimples in that gold plating. Huh, Intel? What is that? Well, there's a box down below that looks like a crystal. It could be a filter though, because I don't see it stamped with like just a frequency. Oh, GPS. Oh, you're right. This has a GPS. That would be the thing that I was probably, uh, that I was uh, saying might be a power amplifier. This is the Wi-Fi module, and then to the right of the Wi-Fi. That's the one we're saying is probably GPS. So yeah, I agree, that's probably the GPS. Let's put the cover back on there. So I wonder if this is a pre-amplifier for the GPS? I mean, I have never seen anyone share an antenna between GPS and Wi-Fi. I've always seen GPS use a separate antenna, but this could just be new. Oh yeah, Nick says they're amused. Uh, Intel didn't use their own Wi-Fi. Yeah, me too. I was expecting this to have an Intel Wi-Fi chipset. It's pretty sparse. There's the spot for the speaker, which was on the back cover. There's <laughs> some rather wiggly little diodes there. It looks like one of them isn't even on. I wonder if that's intentional. That's the UART Mini USB. I'm guessing those would be protection diodes. ST card socket. More protection diodes, I assume the SD card. And then there we have it, really low profile inductor. That's the USB input. This is the micro USB plus super speed. With a 
its little filter bead. That's where the little sensor flat flex plugs in. B18 from this angle. Little tiny square test points. I guess some dust build up on the board since that's where the fan blows right against. It's interesting they'd have the fan blowing against the circuit board instead of the enclosure. The thermal design on this looks really weird because this is their thermal solution. The processor puts out all this heat through this thermal pad, which then goes into this little assembly that I'd taken off earlier. It's like your regular RF shield assembly, except it's made of copper instead of aluminum. So that's nice at least. But then all they're doing is spreading the heat out from the processor up to this copper pad, which is not that much copper. It's still pretty thin. And then that's spreading up to the whole metal frame. Well, no, not to the metal frame even, just to this back piece. So that pad presses directly against here. And there's just not very much metal here, not very much mass, not very much surface area. So yeah, it doesn't, I don't know how they're really getting that much heat away from here. I guess that explains why the fan has to work so hard and it still runs pretty hot. Any interesting markings? Nothing to see, just a polished die. And then around the edges, we have X536B121, SR27M, and some barcodes. There's the power supply chip. Who makes this one? This little beast. Oh, Intel. Intel 6835A. A lot of inductors, a lot of capacitors just packed in there. You can see the giant planes they have just feeding the power rails in there. That's an interesting part. Is that maybe a temperature sensor? And then this is the one that I was guessing is our EMMC storage, the, what was it, 32 gigabytes? And they would be putting it outside the shield because the communication with this is much slower than between the processor and the RAM. That's interesting. So I'm guessing this is the BIOS. It's a big serial flash chip and seems to be the only place that something like that would live. It seems to be connected directly to this little chip. This is a one to two multiplexer. YL, yeah, YL518E as the device marking in the data sheet. Yeah, this gives you the idea. It acts like a set of digital switches that let you connect a bunch of signals to one thing or another thing. And this use case they're showing is sharing an SDIO port between kind of two different SD card shaped things. So an SD slot and a peripheral. I wonder if maybe what they're doing here is sharing the flash memory between one interface that's used for booting and then another interface that's used later on either for booting a different chip or for reprogramming the flash. These two little parts labeled M1 might've been reworked. Oh, audio. It's an audio codec. Well, that's probably all we need to know about it. Well, then that explains all the capacitors around it. So it's probably also got the audio amplifier. Unless this thing over here is related to being an audio amplifier, but that looks like another linear regulator, honestly. So that soldering on the UART port looks almost problematic, but probably just barely okay. Is that a battery charger? BQ2429. That's another TI part, and I thought they used the BQ for battery stuff. An I squared C controlled single cell USB charger. Cool. That's pretty much exactly what they would want here, huh? Yeah, I don't know what that vendor is, but I assume that's RAM. Wow. I think I think we've exhausted all the parts I care to take a look at on here, unless anyone else has suggestions. Might start trying to put this back together. Anyway, that's our thing. This is looking good so far. Oh, so that Logitech thing and the Apple thing are the keyboard and mouse that I plugged into it. So no camera yet. I wonder if it's not showing up here for some reason. It's a good sign. And there's a lot less sunlight in here, so maybe we can see if the depth camera works any better. This seems to be connected to the new network. Do we have an IP? Okay, we're back on dot 141. And I think maybe Ross is happy this time. Okay, 
Well, now that it's dark and the camera's reassembled, let's see how much better it works. That red spot definitely looks like a laser shining through a grating. I mean, it might be an LED, but it looks really lasery to my eyes. There's a cat. It does seem like the location's a little more stable, although I'm not really working it out that much yet. There's some zigzagging, some ups and downs, some 180s. And it has trouble with distance, but this wall is doing much better now that the sun isn't all over it. Well, that's great. That concludes our little teardown and reassembly and play around with this Intel Euclid kit. This seems like a delightful little thing to incorporate into some future projects. Definitely seems like a nice solution to the, the problem where you want a small thing that runs ROS and can handle point clouds. And this is enough processing power for that and a pretty nice set of cameras and some sensors. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little impromptu teardown from this bit of hardware that we got. Uh, thanks so much for uh, for Nick, thanks so much to Nick Sivo for sending this in, and thanks to all of you for watching, and I hope that was interesting. Seems like an interesting little device, cramming a lot of power consumption into a small package, and a lot of high-speed signals. And it definitely seems like this would be difficult for them to put together, so... I wonder if we'll see a version later on that simplifies the mechanical design if they end up uh, sticking with this product. As always, thanks for tuning in. Special thanks to everyone who helps out by sending in ideas and hardware and monthly support with their Patreon money. It's all super helpful. And it's really an honor to be able to keep, you know, making videos and streaming what I'm working on and trying to share this crazy stuff. So thanks for joining me and uh, I'll uh, see everyone next time. As always, um, the streams are kind of as they happen, but I announce them on Twitter with the Scanlime Live account, and of course you can subscribe on YouTube and uh, get notifications. And you too can find out when Tuco is on the rack, as he is now. Happy hacking, everyone. I'll see you all next time. <laughs>